When people picture venomous snakes, they usually picture cobras or rattlesnakes or sea snakes, maybe boomslangs or mambas if they have a colorful imagination. What they don't usually picture, though, is a small pycnose snake that's about as long as a pencil. Hognose snakes are an amazing pet snake. I, I couldn't recommend them enough. With their small size, their rather docile temperament, they're a North American colubrid, so there's no insane heat or humidity requirements. They just, they make an amazing pet snake. Today, we're not gonna talk about what these guys are like as pets. In fact, I actually already did that at great length in my care guide, which you can watch right here for them, where I go all about housing and humidity and all that stuff you need to know for them. Today, we're gonna talk about what Western hognose snakes are like in the wild. So breaking them down, they're in the kingdom Animalia, the phylum Chordata, the class Reptilia, and then the order Squamata, which are snakes and lizards. And then they're in the family Colubridae, which is actually the world's largest snake family. There's a lot of snakes in this group. And this includes a lot of your more common North American non-venomous pet snakes like you see, like corn snakes, rat snakes, milk snakes, king snakes, like the Florida king snake, which we did an animal spotlight on right here. And then also it includes rear fanged venomous snakes, like the false water cobra or hognose snakes. Lastly, they're in the genus Heterodon, which consists of four New World hognose snake species like the Western, Eastern, etc. And this is don't, not to be confused with Old World hognose snake species like the Madagascar giant hognose. And these snakes are very small. They don't really get that big. They also are rear fanged venomous and they have this cute little upturned triangular snout. Western hognose snakes were first described in 1852. They were actually the second to last hognose species to be listed as their own species, about a decade before the Mexican hognose would be. And their name comes from the Latin word for nose, which is in reference to this cute little upturned snout that we're gonna talk about more in a minute. Western hognoses are a really good example of sexual dimorphism, which is where males and females have very notable visual differences. Just by looking at them, you can usually tell male from female, like with lions and the manes, or gorillas with the silverback. With these guys, however, it means the boys are greatly dwarfed by the girls. Girl hot Western hognoses get much bigger. Males usually max out at like 12 to 20 inches in length and about 70 to 120 grams, while females can get nearly three feet long, sometimes over that, and almost 800 grams. They're a small stout snake with somewhat varied coloration and patterning in the wild, but really the most typical one you're gonna see is this light brown body with the dark brown spots right here, and they have the, uh, the black cream colored whitish belly with the orange highlights. This is actually one of the best visual differentiators between Western hognose snakes and their close cousin, the Eastern hognoses, because those guys are way more varied in coloration and patterning, I would say. Western hognoses are found basically in the heart of North America, in a straight line almost, right down from southern Canada down through the American Midwest into northern Mexico with a few isolated populations. They live in dry, rocky areas, usually with loose, sandy or gravelly soil, so things like short grass, prairie, semi-desert, scrub grasslands, etc., all places with relatively low humidity. And they can also live quite high up, having been found regularly at elevations up to 8,000 feet above sea level. These snakes will hit sexual maturity at two to three years of age and they're polygamous. So both males and females will mate with several others of the opposite sex to ensure fertilization. And this goes down in our spring, so like March, April, and May. And then in early to midsummer, the female will lay anywhere from five to 20 eggs. The eggs are laid in dry, sandy soil and they're just left there to incubate for about two months. And then when the babies hatch out within a few hours, they're off hunting and looking for their own food because they're completely on their own. There's no parental protection. And when these snakes are born, the little hatchling snakes, they're only about four to maybe six inches in length tops. They're very, very small. So if you have a male here like Bernie, remember they max out at about 20 inches. So that means they're only going to get as an adult about three times the size of their hatchling self. So these are very small snakes. And in the wild, they have a lifespan of about eight to 10 years maybe, but in captivity, they can live to almost 20. This snake is mostly crepuscular, so it's most active at dawn and dusk. And unlike the Florida king snake from the other animal spotlight video, where it's, they live in Florida, so it's warm year round, these guys are from the American Midwest where they can get very cold winters and a lot of snow. So they hibernate every year and they can hibernate for quite a while, anywhere from as early as early September all the way through to late April. They'll sometimes use other abandoned burrows and nests from other animals, but generally they make their own using this little upturned nose of theirs, which is where they get their name. It acts like a shovel when they put it against the ground and they'll dig down into the dry sandy soil that they live on and they'll dig down and make their own little cave that they can sleep in. 
For such a small, seemingly helpless snake, they've got quite a few defense mechanisms up their sleeve. Now, like I said before, this is a rear fanged venomous snake. Now, it's not even really a fang. It's like a big tooth at the back of their mouth that has a groove in it to drip venom down into prey. So the venom's very, very weak, and it's not a very good delivery system, and the tooth's all the way at the back of their mouth. So it's not like a cobra or a rattlesnake where the fangs are right there, and the venom that they use it can kill prey and predator alike, so they can use it to defend themselves. With these guys, with their bad venom delivery system the venom is really weak they're just not going to use it like that but we'll talk more about their venom in the next section what they do have is a coloration and patterning that's somewhat similar to young rattlesnakes so just visually a lot of predators are kind of wary of going near them and on top of that they can also huff up their body very well they can flatten out their neck not quite looking like a cobra's hood but it does make them look bigger than they actually are they're gonna huff up they're gonna hiss they're gonna do a bunch of closed mouth kind of bluff strikes trying to act big mean and tough and he honestly does this a lot when I go to get him out of his enclosure even though I've had him for years and we do the same song and dance all the time he still will huff up and say hey don't get near me I'm a big big tough guy and then you pick him up and he's like this <laughs> If those don't work, they've actually got a very special last ditch defense mechanism that's very unique in the world of reptiles. And what they'll do is they'll roll over onto their back, they'll decompress, they'll show this bright orange colored underside, they'll defecate, they'll stick their tongue out and they'll just lay there pretending to be dead. And between the look of it, the bright coloration on the belly, the nasty smell coming off them, usually that's enough to deter most predators from wanting to eat the gross dead snake. And then when they leave, he rolls over and he's on his way. This snake is primarily an amphibian eater in the wild, which is fairly uncommon among most snakes, so they eat a lot of frogs and toads. They'll sometimes on rare occasion eat other animals like small lizards, baby mice, but it's mostly the amphibians. And with this snake, again, as I keep saying, they're a rear fang venomous snake, but that venom is very, very weak. It really does not affect mammals usually very well, and also it's very weak compared to even other rear fang venomous snakes. And that's because the venom on this snake is specifically targeted at the cold blooded anatomy of frogs and toads. So what they'll do is they'll bite onto the frog or toad, making sure it can't get away. And then they have to chew their mouth onto it to be able to get that big tooth to reach the body. They'll puncture the big tooth through the frog skin because frog skin is very delicate. They'll puncture it through and start dripping the venom into the frog. The venom will kill the frog and then they eat it. No, there's no constricting despite them being a colubrid. This is still a venom snake. This snake has a lot of predators because even though it's got some very tricky defense mechanisms up its sleeve, at the end of the day it's still a very small snake. So there's things like birds are a very big one. There's also other snakes like king snakes and indigo snakes. You've got raccoons, coyotes, foxes, basically any small to medium sized predator in North America could realistically make a hognose snake dinner. They are very much least concerned. I don't think they'll ever be in danger of going extinct. There are a lot of them and they have a very big range. Now in that range, there are some isolated pockets where they are seeing declines in populations, but it's nothing alarming. Their cousin, on the other hand, the Eastern Agno Snake, it is actually threatened in several states of its range, including here in New York. I don't actually have really any bonus facts for this animal because I kind of covered them in talking about the defense mechanisms and the venom, but. I don't know, it can pull off a top hat really well. So that was our animal spotlight video on the Western hognose snake. Like the video if you learned something. Thank you to our amazing patrons for supporting the channel. If you'd like to do that, link for that will be down below. You can do it as low as three bucks a month, get some cool perks like getting your name added at the end of videos and seeing videos early. Comment down below if you have a hognose snake because like I said, they are very common pets and they're very good pets. But anyways, thanks for tuning in and I'll catch you later.